Dude, we got it now. Ron must have hit the right button. Thank you, Ron, for multitasking. Good morning. I greet you in the name of the risen Christ. It is good to be with you here this morning, worshiping our holy God. I would encourage you to look at your green insert for a glimpse into our calendar. And I just want to remind you that Sunday, October 30th and Sunday, November 6th, will be two worship service, will be one worship service at 10 a.m. Does that make sense? So we have two Sundays in a row where we have one worship service at 10 a.m. On Sunday, October 30th will be our Stewardship Sunday, followed by a breakfast, which is catered by Stephen Grace. He's done that for us for the last two years. It's delicious and wonderful, and we would love to see you all there. November 6th will be our church conference. Reverend Kaboko Kaboko, our district superintendent, will be here presiding over worship and also leading the meeting. So we hope you're able to join us for all of that. We have some um, one big really important vote for the life of our church together, and we hope you can be here for that. Uh, Another announcement just to let you know, because we're in this time of transition, first of all, we want to give thanks to Lucinda Harms. Lucinda is going to be serving as temporary help in the office for the next couple weeks. So we're going to be figuring it out together and and, um, having a lot of fun. But just just to give you a heads up, there probably won't be a November newsletter because we're going to be figuring it out together. And so bulletin and all that will come first. Um, But the SPRC is working hard on hiring. We've had a lot of great applicants, but we're still looking for more if you're willing to apply. So talk to me, send me your resume. We'd love to hear from you. And now, beloved, will you please stand and greet one another in the name of Christ Jesus. As we continue our gathering time for worship, I would like to add two names to your prayer list this morning. We have gotten word about Dick and Audrey Rex. Dick was at the university hospital having surgery and Audrey fell and now she is at the university hospital. She just had hip replacement surgery yesterday. So what? She's at Mercy. Okay, I was told wrong. She's at Mercy. So if you would like to reach out to Audrey or um, send her one of those email a patient notes, I'm sure she would love the love and support and the visits. Will you join me in a time of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day this chance to be together as the body of Christ here in West Branch, this chance to worship your holy name. We ask that our hearts and minds would be open to your Holy Spirit and that we would be changed by our time together and our time with you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.
My name is Margaret Wick. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. You will find it in your bulletin. The living God is with us and with with all creation. Let us awaken our hearts to the presence of God saying, we We praise praise you for your glory. God before us, behind us, above us, upholding us. We We praise praise you for your glory. God with us, among us, beside us, befriending us. We We praise praise you for your glory. God within us, flowing through us, animating, harmonizing. We We praise praise you for your glory. glory. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our opening song, What is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my? Sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Yes, you have a misprint. Yes, I have a misprint. (laughs) It's number 225 in the black, the Faith We Sing songbook. (laughs) Who is is my mother? Who is my brother? (laughs) Who is my mother?
With the touch of your hand, you heal me. In the strength of your arms, you hold me. On the wings of a dove, you fill my life with your love. With the love in your eyes, you see me. By the blood that you shed, you freed me. Like a river of life, you flow within my soul. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. You can find it in your bulletins. The living God is with us. And with, with all creation. A passage from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. May we be equipped by these words to walk in love for God, ourselves, our neighbors, all people, and all God's creation. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You will find the scripture reading on page 844 in your pew Bible. That's Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Just then, a lawyer stood up to text to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put, on his own, he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denali, gave, him, 
gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor? To the man who fell into the hands of the robbers, he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Now we're going to sing from the... uh, The lyrics are in your bulletin. The song is All Things. It starts with a simple question. Where do we see the face of God? Where do we encounter God? A lot of us, or at least from talking to you, what I've learned, a lot of us would say we find God in nature. Uh, Maybe you would even answer that you find God in church, in worship. I want to go back to the Old Testament and I want to tell you about a story that maybe you've heard about. There were these twins born to Isaac, Jacob and Esau. Esau was the elder twin, but throughout his life, Jacob, the younger twin, who was favored by his mother, tricks his brother out of almost everything. As we read this story, it even gets so ridiculous that he puts goat skin on his arms and face and gets his father to give him Esau's inheritance. And in light of this trickery, Esau finally gets so mad that Jacob flees the country. Jacob returns to the home of his ancestors and he gets married and he has children. Esau also gets married and has children. The brothers grow up, but they grow up in vastly different countries. And then after having a conflict with his father-in-law, Jacob decides to return home. On his journey home, he sends his family and his possessions across the river. And then we're told this really weird story where Jacob has an all-night wrestling match. And we're never given the name of his opponent. The scripture seems to imply that it's God. It could be an angel, it could be a complete stranger. There are some scholars that believe it's, it's actually Esau because of what happens next. The next day, Jacob crosses the river with his family and he sees Esau and expects him to be angry, expects him to seek revenge. And instead, Esau offers Jacob forgiveness and welcomes him with open arms. And when this happens, Jacob makes this declaration that seeing Esau's face 
is like seeing the face of God. So now, the question again, where do we see the face of God? Have we seen the face of God in others? Have we seen the face of God in those that we have wronged and yet they've chosen to forgive in us? Our gospel story is also an interesting one. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue like he likes to do, and a teacher of the law stands up like they like to do to challenge Jesus, trying to trip him up and get him to say something wrong, and he starts with this really simple question, what do I have to do to get eternal life? Well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the teacher of the law, I love the way the scripture reads, trying to justify himself, right? Don't you love it? You can almost hear this in almost every argument we have. Well, in attempt to defend what I know might be wrong actions, trying to justify, he asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? And then we get into this parable. This parable of a man who is robbed and beaten to death, almost to death. So we can imagine the state that this man is in. And at first, a priest comes by and passes, sees the man, and passes right by. And then a Levite comes by, sees the man, and passes him right by. Now, there's some interesting scholarship about the road between Jericho and Jerusalem, and some scholars believe that the road just wasn't that wide, which is what made it a favorite place of bandits because there wasn't a lot of options, which means, in some scholars' opinion, that for the priest and the Levite to pass by this man, they would have literally had to scoot along a wall sideways to avoid touching him. Now we can make an argument that if the priest and the Levite had touched this man, the Levite, by the way, since he's differentiated from the priest, was probably like a worship leader. So, you know, as we're looking at today's worship, it would be like if I and Dale walked past this man. If they had stopped to help him and it turned out that he was dead, they would have been made ritually unclean for seven days. And we can assume if they're walking from Jericho to Jerusalem, although we're not told that, they're headed to work. We can almost see the logic. And then Jesus gets really radical and confrontational. And he mentions a Samaritan. And is the Samaritan who stops and helps. Now the the problem with this story is that for most of us, we've heard it before. And we even have charitable organizations named after this event, right? The Good Samaritan, there's Good Samaritan laws. Did you know that because of this event? Or the Samaritan's Purse, which is an organization. So this has become a good word in Christianity, but I wanna talk a little bit about who Samaritans were at this time. See, way back in history, there was a point where Israel was invaded by the Assyrians, another empire, and what the Assyrians did is is they would kidnap the ruling class and all the wealthy and they would take them back to Babylon and force them to live there. You can read about this in the Old Testament. But that left poor people, working class, widows and elders in the country. And it also left the country open for other people to move in. So the belief is is that while the Israelites, the ruling class, the priests, the, the wealthy, all of the businessmen are out in Babylon, there's still this country over here. And the people who are there turn out to be worshiping God turn out to be still, they have their own version of the Old Testament. Samaritans, by the way, still exist in the world. It's still an active religion, but they have their own version of the Hebrew Bible, and they flourish. And the Israelites come back, 
and they encounter these people that worship their God, but not quite in the same way and not in the same place. And the two groups start to teach each other to hate each other. It becomes unclean to be in Samaria. And the two groups start to fight, right? Sometimes the people we fight with the most are those we have the most in common with, but not quite the same, right? And by Jesus' time, the two are frequently fighting. And we see the racism pop up in different parables of Jesus in different interactions. So the Samaritan, the hated, looked upon person, the person that, that the Israelites at that time would have used words for similar to the way we feel about the N-word today, right? That's how they referred to them. The Samaritan stops and helps the man almost beaten to death. You can imagine, maybe start to catch a glimpse of how offensive and radical this parable suddenly is. But it's so obvious who the neighbor is that even the teacher of the law, even the man who would probably argue till he was blue in the face about how wrong the Samaritan was, has to admit that the Samaritan was the neighbor. And Jesus, Jesus says, this is, this is the person that reflects God. This is the person living into the image of God. So again, where do we see the face of God? Where do we reflect the face of God? It's interesting, uh, we've been inundated. If you pay attention to news media, media and political climate, we've been inundated with who's to blame. Whatever side of the poli political issue you're on, we've been inundated with who's to blame. And I would lift up that actually today's political climate is, is not a new thing. We have been doing this since there was human beings. We have been doing that there's an us and that there's a them, that there's the good and there's the bad. There's the in and there's the out. You can see this throughout all of religion. Who's going to heaven and who's not? As if it were up to us to decide. But when we decide, when we decide, Christians, that, that stereotypes are factual and true, when we decide that it's okay to dehumanize someone with our language, to take, uh, take something about whole people groups and just make them lower than ourselves, what we're doing is we're cutting ourselves off from seeing the face of God. We're cutting ourselves off from the chance to encounter God in God's creation. Don't get me wrong, nature walks are beautiful and wonderful. And I'm with you, there's something awe-inspiring about a sky full of stars, but it is only human beings that are created in the image of God. And so if we're looking for the face of God, it is to our brothers and sisters that we must look. Amen? Amen. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Loving God, we've come here today with many different things on our heart. 
but we have all come here. So we just want to take a moment and thank you for that. Thank you for this place, for these people to worship with, for this chance to be with you. God, we confess those times when when we have allowed our certainty, when we have allowed the things that we know to cloud our ability to see you in one another. We ask for forgiveness and we ask for new eyes. Help us to see one another in the way in which you see us. God, we come with brothers and sisters on our prayer list. We come with brothers and sisters that we carry in our hearts that we're worried about. We ask for your presence with them. We ask that your peace and your love would be upon them. We ask that you would raise up communities around them to speak encouragement and life to them. God, we pray for this community of West Branch for our state, for our country, for our world. Give our leaders your wisdom. Help our voices to be strong on behalf of the voiceless. Help us to use our voice and our vote to build your kingdom here in this place. And God, we pray for this, your church, and your church universal, that all might find a place here to belong, that all might find a place here to gather around Jesus Christ, to be together as reflections of your image. God, I know that I cannot speak out loud the prayers of all our hearts gathered together. And so I just ask for our hearts to be open, to give to you now the prayers that we carry inside ourselves. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, I would also like to lift up that we are coming closer and closer to our Stewardship Sunday. Now, as a church, we do a lot of our ministry by faith, and we happily share with you where all of the money goes, but it is also nice to have pledges in place so that we can make smart decisions, wise decisions, be wise stewards of the gifts that uh, we hope you will trust us with. And so I just want you to be in prayer during this time. We'll be taking those pledges the last Sunday in October. Please be thinking about your year as much as you know. I know years are difficult to predict, aren't they? Who knows what's going to be happening. And But be thinking about your next year and praying about how much do you want to commit to building the kingdom through West Branch United Methodist Church? And, and I would encourage you not just to be praying about money, but your time and your talent and your service. Will the ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering? Join me in the prayer of dedication. You'll find it in your bulletin. Let us pray. 
our gracious and generous Creator. You have blessed us with abundance, this beautiful earth and all we enjoy, health and strength, family and friends, work and rest, home and belongings. We are blessed indeed to support this community and provide for those who serve us, to help those in need and extend our mission in proportion to what we have earned and saved. In gratitude, we now joyfully give. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing song, 2222, the servant song in the black Faith We Sing songbook. of us is that we would have the love and compassion and boldness and courage to look for the face of God in all of humanity around us and to reflect the face of God to those in need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless each other by singing Shalom to you.